Hello and welcome back to the Statman Dave YouTube channel. Today we're going to be answering the question, are Pochettino Spurs experiencing the same burnout as Jurgen Klopp's Dortmund? Make sure to subscribe if you are new, turn the notification bell on, like that goddamn video. This video is brought to you with Coral. Anyway, let's get this party started. After wrestling the Bundesliga title away from Bayern Munich for two seasons from 2011 and then finishing second in the 2012-13 and 13-14 campaigns, Jurgen Klopp's Borussia Dortmund crashed back to earth after finishing seventh with just 46 points and something comparable to what's happening to Maurizio Pochettino's Spurs. After three seasons of unparalleled Premier League wins and reaching the Champions League final for the first time in their history, Spurs are showing signs of having fallen off a cliff. Much like Dortmund, in the 2014-15 season, with the North London side picking up just 12 points from the opening nine games, where they played just two out of the top six sides, whilst playing three relegation contenders in Brighton, Newcastle and Watford. But what has caused these drop-offs? Before we explain it, we have to compare the sides. Both play their best football in a high-intensity 4-2-3-1, with the emphasis on the front four pressing high up the pitch. In attack, their band of three would offer narrow and the fullbacks would be tasked with holding the width. Not only is this hard on the attack, attackers in leading the press, the fullbacks getting up and down the pitch, but it also leaves the side very vulnerable to counter-attacks, with just a maximum of four safety players in the centre-backs and defensive midfielders. What this means is the midfielders have to do a lot of hard yards in covering the flanks or joining the press. These tactics result in a lot of work for the fullbacks, defensive midfielders and attacking midfielders. Now this wouldn't be much of a problem if you had a big, deep squad like the usual title contenders, but both Spurs and Dortmund aren't the big boys in their respective leagues, with Dortmund playing second fiddle and performing as almost a feeder club to Bayern Munich, and Spurs unable to compete with the financial might of the rest of the Premier League top six in Man City, Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal and Chelsea. This forces a change in transfer strategy. Interestingly, this strategy is what got these sides into their position as title contenders, signing good young talents and improving them through exceptional coaching and tactics. But it's also what has held them back and caused their crashes. Footballers have a relatively short career, with a real good only career consisting of about 10 years at the highest level, so you can't expect top talents to waste more than three or four years as contenders, or at least not earning the money they deserve. So they move on onto bigger clubs, and the smaller squads they assemble get decimated by losing two or three key players. At Dortmund, and this is almost obvious, with Shinji Kagawa, Mario Goetze and Robert Lewandowski all leaving in consecutive seasons. At Tottenham, this is more of a threat, with Toby Aravirald, Christian Eriksen and Jan Vertonghen's contracts all expiring at the end of the season. However, they did lose Dynamic right back Carl Walker to Manchester City at the start of the 2017-18 season with threats from left back Danny Rose also following. What followed at Dortmund was a lot of injuries to key players in the 2014-15 season where of their usual 10 starting outfield players they missed 12.2 games in all competitions on average that season. And something similar happened at Spurs. With the Spurs first team outfielders last season they missed 10.5 games on average in all competitions. After playing an effective style of football for a few years teams are bound to start to stop you. The easiest way to stop high pressing sides is to go long, bypass their greatest weapon and often getting to directly attack their back four. What compounds this is stale squads, like mentioned earlier. Losing players is bad enough, but trying to integrate new ones quickly can be a real struggle, as Dortmund found out with a number of their replacement signings. But what's even worse is not having any new signings to integrate, which is what Pochettino has faced at Spurs. Spurs made one signing in three transfer windows from 2018 to 19, and that's not enough to keep the squad fresh and focused. Summer 2019, they signed three players, Ryan Sessegnon, Tungai Undembele and Giovanni Lo Celso, but the new players have played just 20% of the Premier League minutes available to them, mainly because they're not tactically ready. And if your team isn't familiar with the tactics or focused on the task in hand, you're gonna be making sloppy reoccurring mistakes. At Dortmund in 2015, they struggled to react when uh, going backwards when they'd lost the ball. Either in the first line of pressure was broken or it was bypassed completely. What would follow would be a laboured attempt to regain possession as the opposition would simply breeze through Klopp's side. Dortmund conceded seven goals directly on the counter-attack that season, the fifth most in the Bundesliga. To make matters worse, goalkeeper Roman Weidefella, who usually would be a solid component of the Dortmund backline, had one of his worst seasons and was dropped by November due to his poor performances. Lewandowski's first goal against Dortmund summed up their woes. From a free kick, Weidefella kicks the ball long. As Boateng wings the header, Lewandowski plays it to Ribéry who carries, his pass is then intercepted 
and then Lewandowski finishes off the move. Everything about that screams a lack of concentration and decision making. From the slow reaction to Dortmund's midfielders to Werderfeller's poor positioning, communication, trying to sweep up an intercepted pass. Switched out to Spurs this season and they're in a very similar boat, with a lack of concentration really hurting them, especially from crosses. Strikers have found it far too easy to run off Spurs' defenders, and goalkeeper Hugo Lloris has faced similar difficulties to Werderfeller and has had a torrid 2019, culminating in the broken broken arm against Southampton, but his replacement Paolo Gazzaniga has hardly helped. Funnily, Brighton's first two goals summed up what Spurs' problems are at the moment. Both came from crosses, both had goalkeeping errors and both resulted in tap-ins. Take Connolly's first goal of the game, Brighton attacking down the left-hand side, the cross for Connolly, Gazaniga spills the shot and Davis doesn't react quick enough to stop the finish and the ball goes into the back of the net. Spurs do look tired. Every time I see them play, they look like they're running on fumes and it's the same as what happened to Dortmund. The pressing intensity is reduced which opens them up for more shots which eventually leads to more goals. In the Premier League this season, Spurs have conceded the fifth most shots but have conceded the second most shots on target. If you allow the opposition to keep getting shots away against a shaky goalkeeper, the goals are just going to come. Normally, if you have a shaky defence and a good attacker, you can balance it out. But in Harry Kane, Spurs have got one of the best strikers around. However, injuries are starting to take a toll on the Spurs talisman. He's missed so many games through ankle injuries, but 2019, when Spurs needed him the most to step up, is when Kane's attacking output has been at its worst. Kane has scored nine goals in 17 Premier League appearances in 2019. Still a pretty good goal scoring rate of 1.9 games per goal, but still below Kane's career average at Spurs of a goal every 1.4 games. Being rushed back after injury after injury because the squad is so thin and rely on the strikers taking its toll on Kane. The same thing though happened to Marco Royce in the 2014-15 season. After scoring 16 and assisting 13 in 30 appearances in the 2013-14 campaign, Royce was directly involved in just 12 goals in 20 appearances in 14-15. Like Kane in 2019, Royce's record wasn't that bad, it just wasn't good enough to carry a struggling side. Christian Eriksen also personifies this burnout. As Spurs' creator-in-chief, Eriksen is arguably the most important player in the starting eleven, with no player registering more assists in the Premier League than Christian Eriksen in Pochettino's time at Spurs. However, because of how Pochettino has set Spurs up, Eriksen covers so much ground, more than anybody else at the club. Last season, Eriksen covered 378.1 kilometers in the Premier League, more than any other Spurs player and 16th in the league overall. That's not what you want from your most important player if you look at the likes of Messi, Ronaldo, Hazard, even Salah and Mane on the clock. Whilst they're asked to do their defensive work, not one of those covers as much ground per game as Eriksen instead of saving their energy for attack. In fact, Liverpool is an interesting one. Klopp has adapted his system, going from a 4-2-3-1 to a 4-3-3 to keep his attackers fresh and become more possession-based. What this means is the two midfield shuttlers, the players that cover the most ground, are largely interchangeable and can be rotated out to keep them sort of fresh from injury. However, Eriksen still covers more ground than any of Liverpool's shuttlers per 90, with only James Milner, who played eight games on the flanks, either at fullback or on the wing, covering more ground per 90 than Eriksen. But to tie it all together, Eriksen has pushed for a move away to a big club in the summer in the way that Goethe and Lewandowski pushed before they left Dortmund for Bayern Munich. The result of Dortmund's season was the loss of Klopp, and if Spurs don't improve, they could see Pochettino following Klopp and walk away from the club. But anyway guys, what do you think? Are Spurs experiencing the same burnout as Klopp's Dortmund, or are they just going through a bad patch of form in the majority of 2019? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, this video has been brought to you with Coral. Subscribe if you're new. I've been Sat Monday. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?